Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm Louisa. On today's podcast, we talk about all things Methodist, as well as a few questions about Catholicism that I may or may not be able to answer. And this is Pastor Ryan on Answering Louisa. All right, everybody, I'm here as always with Louisa, and she's got her questions ready to roll, so fire away. All right. When was heaven introduced in the Bible? Oh, well, uh, I would argue that the concept of heaven is first introduced in the very beginning, in Genesis. The idea of the Garden of Eden, the place where God uh, dwells with humanity, uh, and humanity thrives in the presence of God, in the place he created for us. That, I think, is what heaven is. Uh, More than like a place on the clouds— I think it is a place where, uh, as Sandy Richter writes in her Epic of Eden books, uh, the people of God thrive in the presence of God in the place of God. Hmm. Good question. Thank you. Let me find some of these are just notes. Not all of them are questions. <laughs> all right. It's, it's, you know. Yeah, you have I to understand. Find actual questions. You got to find them. Why do we not like? Why do Methodists not believe in rebaptism? Uh huh. Great question. So for us as Methodists, so Wesleyans. Uh, we believe that God is the acting agent in baptism. In other words, we believe that in our baptism we experience a cleansing of sin. Mm -hmm. And so you can't do that. And I can't do that as a pastor. You can't, as the person being baptized, you can't forgive your own sin. You can't wash it clean. You can't make yourself be a new creation. And as great as I am, and it's pretty great. And as humble. And humble. As great and humble as I am, (laughs) I can't do it either. I have no magic power. I have no supernatural power other than the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. And so God is the one who is the agent in our baptism, the one that that is doing something. And so for us, um, the same reason why we'll baptize a baby is the same reason why we won't rebaptize somebody. It's because we believe what God has done is done. It doesn't need to be redone uh, because it's not dependent on the person receiving it or the person, you know, pouring the water. It is definitely the work of God that washes us clean by his grace, makes us to be new creations and brings us to a place of heart that we can then rightly respond to the grace of Jesus Christ by entering into relationship with him. Okay. Good one. Why do some churches do communion every week while the others do it like only once a month? Yeah, uh, it's just a choice that different churches make. Uh, I can tell you why Methodists historically in the Americas have only done communion periodically uh, like that, once a month, once a quarter, whatever. When Methodism was first getting started in the Americas, um, there were not enough pastors for every church. It was spreading so fast. A lot of the pastors uh, were English citizens, and after the War of Independence, they went back to England. And so one pastor would be covering multiple churches. They'd be largely horseback, and they were called circuit riders. And so they would have a circuit that they rode. So this Sunday, they would ride into to Waco, and they would preach at the church. They would baptize everybody that needed to be baptized. They would marry everyone who needed to get married. Uh, they would bury, do all the funerals, and then they'd get on their horse, and they'd ride to Marlin. And th- that next Sunday, they would preach and baptize and do communion and Barry and Mary, and then they'd get on their horse and they'd ride to, you know, I don't know, Axtell, and then they would they would do the same thing. And so because of that, you you only had communion on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on how large the circuit was. And Methodists are nothing if we don't follow tradition. Like, <laughs> if you do something twice, you have to do it that way forever and ever. And since we did it that way for a long time it just kind of became ingrained okay why is the catholic service called mass i am a diehard methodist and i don't know i don't know either i'm sorry yeah this is another one of those questions i'd be comfortable asking google i'm sure the word means something that probably I, i probably knew it at one time but i'm not as sharp as I once was. Maybe we should go to a Catholic church so we can find out. I've been to one. Have you? No. It's an interesting experience. 
I actually think that every Protestant should go to a Catholic church and every Catholic should go to a Protestant church at least once, and here's why. It makes you a better... Uh, it makes you better at receiving visitors. So, I, I mean, when I, I had gone to seminary before I went to a Catholic mass. So, I mean, I'm pretty educated. I, like, am familiar with the church world. I went into a Catholic mass, and I was so confused about when to sit, when to stand. Everyone else seemed to know exactly what to do. I had no clue. But what it did for me was it made me more sensitive to our services on Sunday morning that we can't just assume that people know what to do and take for granted they know how to participate. So if you really want to make sure that guests have the best experience, you have to be thoughtful about about their experience. So I would say going to a, to a church that has very different tradition can remind you of the importance of being thoughtful of guests and visitors. All right, let's go one more. Why do people always assume that the wise men... Um like are hang on why are they are they actually kings like do we know if they were kings or are they just people yeah they they were they were uh scholar kings nobles maybe noble would be a better word uh to put that so they were persian uh persian wise men uh likely uh astrologers studying the stars and skies uh they would have been um I think today they would have been thought of more of like professors, like seminary professors who study all the ancient texts um, of all the different world religions and who are looking for the signs and the stars that tell what God or the gods were up to. Uh, But they probably came from some level of noble birth to be able to afford the opportunity to study like that. And they certainly were treated nobly by the king in his court because they would have been uh, kind of royal advisors. So whether they were kings by birth or by stat, stat, you know, stature, I think, yeah. is, is probably more accurate how we would think of them. There you go. So next time Christmas comes around, think seminary professor. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time.